Hey, my name is Paul, alias uh, Dis91, and I'm the author of the YO Loa 1 field tester. And uh, today uh, we are launching this uh, device with Seed Studio, and I'm gonna explain you a bit what is uh, the Loa 1 field tester and uh, how does that look when you get it. So at first, Loa 1 field tester is a way to uh, map the network coverage, the Helium network coverage. Uh, it's also a way to uh, do some asset tracking and so on. We're gonna show that in detail later. So when you get it, uh, you have three different components. You have a YO terminal, uh, which is a short and cool device with a graphic screen where you can see different things on it. Uh, you have a battery module, so the battery module is the energy to power all that stuff. And you have the third piece, which is the uh, LoRa E5 uh, transceiver. So this uh, part is able to communicate over uh, the uh, LoRa 1 or long fee network uh, that is uh, Helium. So uh, when you get it, basically you just have to assemble it, so it's quite easy. Uh, you have the LoRa uh, E5, you put the battery pack up on it, so they are all together, and now we have the wire terminal, and we are going to up connect the wire terminal. So now it's ready, maybe you also have to uh, screw the antenna on it, okay? So now we have the device which is fully ready. To use this, it's uh, quite easy, I'm gonna switch it up, with a button on the, on, the, on the side and the screen is pouring up and on that screen you're gonna see a configuration step. Um, once you get uh, different pieces assembled, uh, we're gonna switch it on and as I told you, uh, we need to select the zone, the radio zone and for this I'm gonna click on that button to do the selection, okay? So I can select the different zone, so that's for Asia, depending on country you may have different Asia setup. Uh, this is for Korea, this is for India, this is for uh, Austria, this is for Europe, and uh, this is for US. Okay, so I'm in Europe, so I'm gonna get the European setup. And so once I've selected the Europe zone, I'm gonna push that button to do the selection. So oh, it is started. So as soon as uh, we start, we have the startup logo and we reach the screen. So here we are on uh, the screen uh, of the YO terminal. So we have different screen. We're gonna um, see all of them. Uh, the first team uh, will display what we call the RSSI, so the Sinite Strange. Uh, the device is receiving when it gets a NAC. So basically, it indicates that uh, the device is receiving message from the network and the power of uh, this reception. We also have the SNR, so um, signal on noise, uh, which indicates the quality of the signal. Uh, we can see the number of retry depending on the setup of the retry that is here. Currently we have no retry, so this won't display a lot of things. Uh, we have more interesting information now. That's a TX RSSC, which is uh, something you get from the network. So basically when the device will communicate, uh, it will send a message and this message will be analyzed backend and as a response, the device will receive the signal strength received by Helium network. And so you will be able to see the uh, IS and lowest RSI uh, signal uh, that the network will, uh, will transmit. The next indicates the number of hotspots that has been received the message. Uh, there is a limit to three hotspots in uh, the version uh, you have, so you can get a maximum of three uh, hotspots as a response, uh, but that's an information uh, number of hotspots you have. You also have the distance of the hotspots that are responding, uh, so you're gonna have the minimum and the maximum distance so the hotspot with the minimal and the hotspot with the maximal dis distance that received your message as part of the three hotspots we uh, indicated previously. 
The next screen is a, a, a more uh, a screen with information about the GPS. Uh, so currently you see that the device is not synced to the GPS, but you can see that here. So that's basically what you can see on the device and you get in real time when you are uh, doing uh, the mapping. Uh, so let's go to any of them. By the way, let's go to the first one and I will explain you what you see on the different uh, part of uh, the um, device. So here uh, you see uh, the information about uh, the, uh, the value. We're going to see that it's, it's going to be completed in, in a few seconds. Um, and on the top here, you have different settings you can do. The first one is the power the device is going to use. If I want to change the transmission power, I click on that button to select it. You see that the color is changing. And now with this 5D button, you can go down or you can go high. In Europe, the limit is 14 dBm, so that's why I will select 14. Now we can select the spread factor, which is uh, the speed of the transmission. With SF12, uh, the speed of the transmission is low, which means that we can cover larger distance, okay? Um, but it also means that uh, as we have a duty cycle, uh, we won't be able to have a lot of communication uh, and a, at a quick rate. For the demonstration, SF12 is good, but for the demonstration, I will select uh, SF7, uh, to have uh, some better speed displayed. Here we have the retry. Uh, so when the communication is not uh, act, uh, the device can try to retry the transmission. I recommend for mapping to keep zero, uh, as I mean the retry uh, will transfer if it works on a second or third time. It will transfer a position information which is wrong because you are moving during the between the different retries. So it's better to have no retry between only one transmission. Here you're, we are indicating the mode, uh, so here the mode is manual, which means that if I want to send a message, I need to push on the button, okay? I will also see the other information we see. Here we have the status, so here we are disconnected, so it means that the device never connect, and here is information about uh, the duty cycle, and currently as we are disconnected, there is no information. These two indicators are important. The point you see here, which is uh, orange, is related to the GPS quality. So here the signal, GPS signal quality is low and not enough uh, to be reported to uh, the mapper. Uh, but it means that we have some GPS information. When it's red, it was red previously, it indicates that we have no GPS. If I go here to the GPS, previously everything was red and we had no information. And here you see that we get information from the GPS. We have the time, we have the latitude and longitude, we have the altitude. And what makes it uh, yellow and not um, green is the edge top quality. So it means the precision of the position we have here. Okay? So that's why it, it is that color. When the edge top uh, will go around one, uh, it will become green. Currently, I'm indoor. Uh, so having a, a GPS going green is, is not uh, that easy, uh, but I have a GPS repeater uh, in my home, so uh, the GPS repeater may help me uh, to get what we get to uh, right now, and, and potentially uh, will switch green in a few uh, in a few minutes. Uh, GPS is made to be outside, okay? The GPS is on that side, uh, so I recommend that this side is exposed as much as possible to the sky uh, to help to have a, a better precision. So, um, the other one is the battery level. So when you are using uh, the YO battery, um, you have the battery level display here with a color indicating where uh, we are. Okay, so when it's uh, red and start blinking red, it means that you really quickly power it uh, to make it running. Uh, to uh, power uh, the battery, you connect here uh, a battery uh, power supply or anything to, to refill it. So, uh, as I say, currently we are disconnected and we are in manual mode. Uh, so, if I click, I will generate a connection. So this is what I'm going to do. So you see that when I click, uh, there is a state join, meaning that the device is uh, trying to join the network. 
uh, and now it's green CNX indicating that we are connected to the network. So once we are connected to the network, I can click again and so we are transmitting something. And you see that uh, this transmission is indicated here. So it means that uh, uh, we had obtained a response from the network. So we have the signal quality coming from the network and the SNR. It was the first frame transmitted, so number one, and we had zero repeat. So we see this information here. Uh, we also uh, go, if I change to uh, other uh, direction, I can see the SNR related to this communication the retry, uh, which is zero, and uh, I didn't obtain information from the backend uh, for this currently because the GPS quality is not good enough for this. So this is the manual mode. Uh, I can click again and uh, send another communication. So it will be added to the previous one, but I can also select uh, auto mode. So in this case, by going up and down, so in this case, here in every hour, a message is automatically fired. I can go to every 15 minutes, every five minutes, every one minute, or eventually going max rate, which means every time the duty cycle on me to transfer, uh, to transmit a new communication, it's gonna be done. You see that during that time, there's no relation between what I did and this, but it's just a time to get uh, satellite uh, information. Uh, the satellite has become green, so no other information can be reported uh, to uh, the, um, uh, sorry, it can be reported uh, to, um, to, the, to the mapper and uh, to uh, the cargo environment, so which means that you can get the information in cargo, okay? So here you can see, yeah, we get the information from the backend uh, here. And an example, you see uh, what is the signal strength seen by the network. Sometimes you have no response. Uh, it's normal. It just means that uh, some data get lost uh, during the, the communication and, and it's not a, a, big, a big problem. Uh, here we have the distance of the hotspots. There are a couple of meters around me, so that's why they are so close. Uh, sorry, that was uh, the number of hotspots, which is one, and here's the distance, so they are really close, or they are really around me. Okay, so now you have seen uh, everything uh, on the feature uh, you have on the Wyola One Field Tester. Uh, when you have finished to use it, you just have to switch it off. Okay, there's no thing specific, and if you restart, it will restart in the same mode uh, you have configured previously. So here, for example, there has been max rate uh, with SF7, so it will automatically uh, join uh, and, and boot up. The other thing I can show you is if you made a mistake by selecting the wrong zone or need to change the zone, um, we can uh, reset it by going to uh, putting this button done and at the same time I'm gonna push the button here. So I push the button, I maintain it push and reset. That way I can go back on the setup screen. So once you see that, you have to release the button and you can access to that screen. So from that skin, screen, I can change the zone if I need to do that. Be careful, you can also change things on these settings and these settings are the credential of your device. So if you change something here or here or here, uh, you can lock your device. It means that the credential won't be correct and your device won't be able to connect again. Okay, so make sure you don't touch that. Uh, if you don't need to do it and you can change the zone in case you need it and you validate by clicking. Okay, once you do that, you're just rebooting and uh, restarting with the new zone. Okay, um, when you do that, it's uh, it can uh, eventually change the previous setting you had here, which, which is uh, normal. Okay, that's it. Uh, now you can go outside and you can uh, see what you do in terms of coverage mapping on mappers.helium.com or uh, you can follow uh, your uh, movement on uh, cargo.helium.com If you have any question or if you see any bug, uh, you can uh, create an issue on a GitHub project and I will try to fix that.
Okay, I hope you're gonna enjoy the device. Uh, it's really important for the network to have information about the coverage. As you see, it's quite easy to use. Um, you can update the firmware once some new release will be available. For that, you can go on my GitHub page, and on that GitHub page, you will find the releases with the binary. Changing the binary is really easy. You just drag and drop the binary uh, to the device. Maybe I will uh, show you that on a, a next video. And for now, I wish you uh, a good uh, coverage mapping experience. And if you need any question, if you have any question about the product, you can touch me uh, on a Helium Discord. My name is Disc91, so you can contact me and ask any question about the product.